Hello, I just have to shoot this uh, video because it was a, uh, it's kind of a cool little duh moment uh, when it comes to writing some code. Uh, recall the one you just saw <clears throat> a little bit ago, the robot was real jerky and I was bouncing around and I was uh, looking at trying to streamline a little bit and then I realized something, uh, um, well, really simple and uh, it's worthy of, of uh, sharing. Um, so again, super fast. Uh, I've explained this in the last video. I've got my variables that are going to hold the information from the the receiver as it comes in to each of the six channels. I've created these five different objects. <clears throat> One of them I've labeled a DC motor because I'm going to hook up a motor controller to it. Uh, if you want more details, look at the other video. Uh, I've set my six pins that are going to be hooked up to my uh, Airtronics right here. Um, the six pins correspond to the six channels out. I've set them all to input and I've attached these devices. I have four servos hooked up to these SRA arms and like I said, I've left this one here. Uh, <coughs> turn on serial and we go down to this loop. And this is the, the cool part. So if I were to turn on my transmitter and the antenna is up this time, and oops, turn on the COM port. All right, you can see, look at channel zero, wait for it to go down. Channel zero works just great, okay? And I was sitting there thinking, well, you know, this is pretty nice, pretty fluid. Let's see if we can smooth this out. So what I said is, well, let's look at this. This, <clears throat> this time here, this is 25,000 microseconds or 25 milliseconds. That's how long it's going to wait to receive the leading edge of the serial uh, communication. So it's going to give it 25 milliseconds and then it's going to time out. So, well, you know, I, I, I don't got it. All right. So if you uh, servos, I have a whole video on this, which maybe I'll put a little link on here. Um, in brief, servos work by pulsing at one point. At one to two milliseconds with a 20 millisecond delay. So if it's at one millisecond, you know, the servo is going to be at its maximum, say, in the counterclockwise position. And at two milliseconds, it's going to be at its maximum in the clockwise position. <clears throat> 1.5 milliseconds, and it's straight up. Anywhere in between, you can put it in any position. Okay. Um, so I thought to myself, well, let's see if we can trim this down. And it's actually kind of amazing, uh, not really, actually, in hindsight. I'm going to set this to 19 milliseconds, 19,000 microseconds. And lo and behold, when I load this in, control shift M, <clears throat> transmitter is on, I get gibberish. See that? Some of them are working, some of them aren't. Um, it's actually the channel zero seems to be working, but it's lost to channel one. Channel two seems to be working, lost channel three, channel four seems to be working, well, channel five was never hooked up anyway. I'm starting to lose my signal. Oh my goodness. All right, well, let's go to 20 milliseconds. Remember, that is the idle time for a servo. And by no surprise, we're going to find, at least I certainly hope so, that if I go 20 milliseconds and open up my little window, it's back again and it works. Okay. <clears throat> so now I'm back to having complete control and it's able to in interpret it. So that basically means that each one of these things is going to be a 20, around 20 millisecond wait uh, for the leading edge which doesn't really come as a surprise because servos are designed to wait 20 milliseconds between pulses, which ultimately means we're going to play it safe. I'm going to bring it back up to 21 just in case. We'll give it an extra millisecond there. Um, but where that really comes into play is up here in my drive servos. I'm in such a habit of putting a 20 millisecond delay in between pulses that, you know, it's, it's silly. I'm already way over that 
down here. This is taking, you know, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. We're talking 100 and some milli 120 milliseconds going through all those five pulses, uh, waiting for the leading edge. And there is no reason at all to add another 20 millisecond delay there. Okay. So if I just rem that out, it's going to get smoother. And actually, I'm going to load this up. And we can see. Um, we can see we've still got a nice signal. Okay. And so now let's go ahead and make it run servos. Uh, keep in mind, don't look for anything super here. Because, uh, well, because you're not going to get it. It's still too long. It's still going to be jerky, but hopefully it'll be better. Okay. By the way, that this part of this quivering is just because there's not enough mass. It's just kind of floating around. But you can see now I got, you know, I've got my control. It's better. But we want to make it even better. Well, that's not too terribly hard. Let's um, let's ram out a couple of these. And so we're going to get rid of a 20 millisecond here, 21 millisecond. We're going to get rid of another one there. So we're still going to have just these four servos, and I would expect it to get even smoother. Okay. And lo and behold, look at that. It's definitely smoother. Okay, we're getting closer. We're getting rid of that delay. It's getting more fast acting. So ultimately, what that means is uh, to get a really seamless thing, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to be looking for changes. We're gonna have to look for um, uh, some sort of interrupt or some sort of change in signal. And again, like I said, I may not even worry about that for a while. Let's keep this code simple. It's perfectly functional for what I need to do. Um, but I thought I would explain this, uh, this delay here as well as this getting rid of this unnecessary delay, which is just adding time to something we already have too much of. And that's it for the moment. I'll load this one up as well uh, shortly, the code onto our page, and I will see you soon.